In Baltimore, politicians are too dumb to figure out why some landlords don't want rental assistance. And in Indianapolis, small claims courts are being overrun with eviction cases. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have two interesting articles for you today. And one's coming out of Baltimore, and one's coming out of Indianapolis. And, you know, the first article, it has to do with politicians who just can't figure out why some landlords don't want to accept the rental assistance. I mean, you know, they just can't figure it out. They never actually talked to the landlords before they put the rental assistance programs in place. So that's probably why they don't understand, okay? If they actually had talked to any of us beforehand, they would actually have some sort of a clue. And in the second article, it's going over the fact that the small claims courts in Indianapolis are being absolutely overrun with eviction cases. Since the eviction moratorium ended, this is a great thing, you know? So small landlords, big landlords, everyone can finally get back to doing business. But before I get into those two articles, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know, you know, if you have gone ahead and filed an eviction yet on a tenant who hasn't paid you. Okay, if you have and you, you know, you're working on getting that tenant out, good for you. Okay, now keep in mind while I'm going through this, I am still, you know, recovering from a cold, so my voice is not going to be the best, but I'm still working my best to bring you the news every day. So, the first article it comes from WBLTV.com and it says, I am entitled to it. Some Baltimore landlords refuse to accept eviction prevention funds. Yeah, I I keep on having to bring this up, but there's a lot of good reasons why landlords don't want to accept funds and politicians are clueless to why. They think it's like we're getting free money or something and they don't realize all the stipulations that they put on that money mean that a lot of landlords just don't want to accept it. Billions of federal dollars are now available for eviction prevention. The money will help families impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, but it seems some landlords are reluctant to take the funds, adding to the frustrations some struggling tenants said they feel. Kimberly Harrington says she's tried to keep calm, but fear and anxiety created by the COVID-19 pandemic has had a tremendous impact on her. She's lost three jobs, had issues with unemployment, and now is in jeopardy of losing her home and apartment complex where she has lived here for 20 years. I know I've done everything I was supposed to do on my part, but this was like a slap in the face, Harrington said. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, okay? If there are other issues at hand, the landlord should have the right to take their property back. I'm not saying that you're not a good tenant, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if there are other issues at hand, then maybe that is why the landlord wants you out rather than wants to accept that rental assistance, okay? So you claim that you're, you're the, this great tenant who's been there for 20 years, but then you say, hey, you lost three jobs, okay? Well, how long has it been since you last paid rent? And how much trouble did you give the landlord? Did the landlord try to contact you? Did you actually try to work with the landlord through all of this? Or did you just apply for rental assistance at the last minute after the landlord had been missing rent payments for a year? Okay, so there, there's a lot of questions in there. And, you know, a landlord has the right to do what they want to do with their property. Harrington said her landlord who suggested she seek eviction prevention funds and who accepted the money in January to pay past due rent, at this point is refusing to accept rent assistance money from Baltimore City. I am entitled to it. Whoever needs it is entitled to it. If you are a city resident, you are entitled to it. It's up to the landlord to accept it. If you're getting paid in full and all the balances will be zero, I'm not understanding, Harrington said. Well, here's what Harrington needs to understand. No, you're not entitled to that money, okay? The landlord is entitled to their property. They don't have to accept your money, okay? They don't have to accept the the rent payment you make. They don't have to accept the rental assistance program. They don't have to do anything. The only thing they have to do is what they want to do, okay? You're not entitled to you know, free rental assistance to stay in, in this property any longer than the landlord wants you to stay in there. 
Oh, man, people just don't understand that, okay? And it says here the landlord actually, you know, took funds in January, you know, to help with the past due rent. And I'm sure that the, at the time the landlord was like, okay, well, you know, um, now, you know, get back on your feet and, you know, pay me like normal. But now you're, you're, you're trying to get more rental assistance to this landlord? It just sounds like the landlord said to himself, well, this is a person who doesn't look like they're ever going to be able to pay me consistently again. So if I keep taking this rental assistance, I'll never be able to get him out of here. Public Justice Center attorney Matt Hill said it's become an issue in Baltimore and other places around the country. Landlords are balking at certain stipulations in the rental assistance contract, including a provision not to evict the tenant for 90 days. Some landlords don't want any restrictions on what they can do, when and how, with their eviction proceedings. I think that's wrong, Hill said. Well, Hill, I don't really care what you think, okay? And I agree with the landlords who say they don't want any restrictions put on their property. Why, why should they get a restriction put on their property, okay? A tenant signs a one-year lease. They don't pay the rent for that lease. They are entitled to take that property back through the eviction process, okay? So, you know, demanding that, oh, well, if you would take the money for them to stay here, well, I never intended the tenant to stay here longer than their lease. So why should I have to, you know, put up with them for an additional 90 days? That's ridiculous. You know, my, my biggest gripe with all of this is, you know, they put stipulations on the money to receive it. You know, there's no stipulations on receiving the, the rent money from a regular tenant. So why is there stipulations on the rental assistance? Because the government wants to take control of these properties from the landlords, okay? And this is just a push towards socialism. And I've been saying that for a long time, okay? I'm, I'm absolutely sick of all these ridiculous, you know, things and... You know, they, these people, they don't understand why landlords are so frustrated and just, just getting completely out of the business right now. So I'm going to skip over a couple of paragraphs here. The Baltimore City Mayor's Office of Children and Family Success told 11 News landlords had no concessions under earlier funding, but now under the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, concessions are required. The 90-day provision is considered critical to the success of the program and to an avoid an eviction crisis. So yeah, that, that's it right there. That's why the landlord accepted the rent in January, but now is not accepting it because they put more stipulate they put stipulations on it. There were no stipulations on it before, and now there are stipulations. So the landlord's like, I'm not doing it. Nope, I just want you out. <laughs> okay, so they screwed themselves by asking too much from a landlord who already was bending over backwards to keep these people in these properties. So, yeah, just typical, typical, typical that politicians, you know, they just don't understand the things that they put into place and how they actually affect the, the people who are, you know, directly impacted by it. You know, they're like, oh, we're going to protect tenants, not realizing they're simultaneously screwing over landlords. So the second story I have for you today, and it's coming out of Indianapolis, and it's from WTHR.com, and it says, small claims courts flooded with eviction cases. Judges work to connect tenants, landlords with resources. It's estimated 93,000 Hoosier households are behind on rent and at risk of eviction. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see the landlords are finally able to file those eviction cases in some places. So, you know, this was expected to happen. And of course, there's going to be a backlog because there are a ton of people right now who haven't paid rent in a long time and there, there's no recourse other than filing for eviction against them. Now, all of these won't lead to eviction. Some of these people will leave on their own. Some of these people will work out deals with their landlords, but you know, the, the process needs to be moving. And that's the main thing that the eviction moratorium was holding up. After the CDC eviction moratorium ended last month, small claims courts have been slammed with eviction cases. It's estimated 93,000 Hoosier households that include about 84,000 children are behind on rent and at risk of eviction, according to the National Equity Atlas Rent Debt Dashboard. 
We will work as judges within our communities to try and make sure we create a win-win for both sides, said Judge Kimberly Bacon with the Lawrence Township Court in Marion County. And that, that's good to hear, okay? It's good to hear that the judges aren't going to impede the process and, you know, do stuff like they did in some jurisdictions, like completely close the courts down. But, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, I don't want to see a flood of people out on the streets. Nobody does. Landlords just want to be paid, okay? So the best case scenario in this is that landlords would be able to, you know, work deals out with the tenants in order to get paid. The tenants pay the back rent that they're owed and they're allowed to stay in their properties, okay? And, you know, the, the second best scenario obviously, obviously would be to get rid of the non-paying tenants and get paying tenants back into the properties, okay? So, yeah, um, good news coming out. Of Indianapolis and you know hopefully the rest of the country you know a lot of landlords are getting those eviction cases filed and things are finally getting back to normal